Hello folks, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today is April 10th, 2021. I want to quickly recap last week's stock market activities and take it from there. So with that, you know, few headlines last week. The Ethereum cryptocurrency uh, shot up. Uh, there is some news that Mark Cuban has bought a lot of Ethereum um, off late. Um, gold and silver are up. Crypto stocks were down. I mean, crypto stocks were up. Uh, example, um, BTBT, which is Bit Digital, and uh, Silver Silvergate, and fintech stocks were up. You know, Square, PayPal, Four, which is uh, Shift Four, and technology stocks were up. Um, all the major technology stocks, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Snap, Roku, etc., they were all up. Semiconductor stocks were up. Um, you know, due to the shortage, I think you know they're all going up as usual. Um, and bonds are lower. Uh, this is a, a general trend of late. Um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency was down. Um, and few few biotech stocks are down big. For example, Fibrogen, which is FGen, um, Acadia Pharmaceuticals, um, MTAM, a Molecular Template. These are all down. I think there, is a, there was a big news in Fibrogen that uh, they fabricated some of the results. That's why that stock tanked heavily. Clean energy stocks were down, uh, CLNE, FCEL. Solar stocks were down big time, you know, and Face Energy, Solar Edge, Sun, uh, Sunworks, Sunrun, Maxion. Um, and EV, electric vehicle stocks were down, uh, Quantum Space, Scape, Xpav, Lee. Cannibal stocks were down. Um, um, and travel stocks were down, example, trip.com. Some of the small cap Brazil 2000 stocks were down, and energy stocks like ExxonMobil, Devon Energy, Occidental Petroleum, P Pioneer, they were all down. And large cap, cap China stocks were down, example, uh, Tencent, Alibaba, uh, KE Holdings, you know, these were all down. So with that, let's uh, now look at um, big picture and see what's going on in the market. So with that, let's look at uh, major uh, indices here. Uh, first one is S&P 500, uh, which is a slash ES in the future market. And as you can see, our last two weeks, um, you know, S&P 500 has done very nicely, um, up, 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 all the way up. I think they're almost at the, you know, 52 week high now. So we have to, you know, kind of, you know, be a little bit careful with all the news about, um, you know, new money coming in, um, you know, um, Fed um, giving a lot of money to folks. I think, you know, stocks are generally, you know, doing well. Same story, um, Dow Jones, uh, um, Dow 30 is doing well. Some down days, down days here and there, but overall it's doing very nicely. Um, same story with NASDAQ, it's also doing nicely. Um, and uh, Russell 2000, it's a little bit, you know, choppy as, as you could see. For the week it was down a little bit, um, but overall, you know, I think it's, uh, it's also okay. Um, bonds, as you can see, are kind of flatlining to down. Uh, same story with the, you know, the ZN. Um, crude oil itself is flat to down, as you can see here. That's why some of the energy stocks were down. Uh, gold is, uh, you know, it's up, as you can see here. And dollar itself is uh, kind of down. Um, so now let's go into um, major ETFs. Um, you know, we, it's a similar pattern. I will not go into too much detail here. All the big... Um, Market indices are up, SPY, DIA, QQQ, IWM Russell is a little bit weaker right now because uh, technology stocks are going up. Uh, Russell is taking a little bit backseat these days. Um, the TLT, um, which is Treasury, uh, is a little bit flat to down. Uh, gold is up, um, consumer staples is up. Um, and utilities are a little bit, you know, it's up, but last three days it was a little bit down. Technology is all the way up. You know, it's really you know major trend as you can see. All the big um, technology stocks are up. Um, semiconductors are doing very nicely. Um, the XAR, which is defense stocks like Lockheed Martin, Northrop, they are all kind of doing okay. Um, XLE Energy is down. Um, retail stocks are doing okay. Um, IYR, which is uh, home um, real estate stocks, they are kind of doing okay. 
So financial stocks are up and uh, XLI industrials are doing very nicely. Think about Caterpillar, Honeywell, some of these stocks, they're all doing nicely. Now let's look at, uh, you know, big picture uh, on a five year one day chart. Uh, S&P 500 all time high, as you can see here. This is when it crashed due to COVID back in last year, March timeframe. Um, and skew, this is one thing I always look at. This is a volatility indicator. And skew is dropping off a little bit, which is a, which is a good sign. That tells me, um, you know, really folks are enthusiastic about the market. So if the skew is above 145, I would be watching out. Um, but skew, because it dropped, there is some enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, people are really buying into this uh, bull run here with the new money coming in from Fed. I think, you know, maybe this uh, market has got some lag by looking at skew uh, falling off. That's a good sign. Um, and then, then, you know, VIX itself uh, is kind of flat. You know, I'm tempted to buy some VIX uh, call options um, maybe three, four months out. Uh, it's, uh, VIX is so cheap. I think it's good to buy some VIX call options and take it from there. Now let's go into you know, big picture, um, one one year, one day bond. Bonds are trying to get a little bit uh, up, as you can see here, flat to up. Um, and uh, TNX, which is, uh, you know, treasury, um, you know, the the 10 year, um, you know, 10 year treasury uh, index. Um, it's it's uh, kind of flat, as you can see here. Um, and DXY, which is dollar index itself, is uh, flat. So one thing to kind of watch out for as bond, if it goes a little bit higher, uh, then there is a chance the stock market can take a backseat. That's one thing to watch out for because it's not there yet, but you can see a little bit, you know, bond is going up to some extent, but we have to watch this a little bit carefully, but it's uh, down from, you know, in a one year chart, it's on a down downtrend as you can see here. So this is one thing to watch out for. If bond goes up, um, there is uh, some chance stock market can take a little bit backseat. So with that, let's uh, jump into uh, you know major big cap stocks here. Um, as you can see here, Microsoft, um, Apple, um, Amazon. Amazon is taking doing very well off late. Um, Facebook is doing nicely. Google is going all the way up. Netflix is a little bit weaker, but I think it's uh, you know getting traction in the last week or so. Nvidia with all the semiconductor shortage, it's uh, doing very nicely. J and J, I think they are a little bit down. You must have uh, read the news. They had some uh, mishap with the vaccine with the Emergent Bio. I think that could be the reason they have to discard a lot of their vaccine. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, vaccines. I think that may be the reason. It, this could be a good buying opportunity. You know, because uh, Normally, when Johnson & Johnson comes down, it's a good opportunity to buy some good dividend aristocrat also. Uh, PayPal, as you can see, this stock has come down off late. I think it could be you know, good to buy on a pullback. Um, UNH is shot up um, very nicely. United Health. Um, Merck is a little bit down. I think it could be good to buy some Merck for the long term because it's uh, you know down and uh, this stock is good from a dividend perspective also. Medtronic doing nicely. People are taking, you know, taking those elective surgery done. I guess its uh, stock is doing nicely. J.P. Morgan is up. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway doing very nicely. So so is Visa and uh, CME, which is uh, you know one of the fintech stock, Chicago Mercantile. You know, it's a little bit flat. I think it's it may be good to you know buy some of these stocks like CME. Uh, CBO, CBOE, some of these stocks, even um, NDAC, NASDAQ, you know, these are really good steady ID type stocks. So with that, let's go into um, major ETFs. So, you know, as you can see here last week, um, all the major ETFs, the big major ETFs, they all did well. XLK, XLY, QQQ, they all did very nicely. Um, only place where we see some red is... Uh, Russell 2000 small cap stocks, emerging um, market, um, and dollar, large cap China, and energy, which is XLE. So, you know, 
Some of you, you know, you may not want to buy stock, you know, stocks go up and down. One of the good way to buy is really you could buy some of these, uh, you know, major ETFs like XLK, which is a technology, um, you know, uh, ETF. You know, very nice, uh, ex very small expense ratio for this uh, ETF. You could buy some very nice five-year return. Uh, Ten-year return is also very nice. So you could, you know, buy some of these on a down day and keep it for, you know, a long time. And, you know, same is the story with QQQ. QQQ, long time ago, this used to be a tech, you know, technology. Now they have, you know, both biotech and technology. It's a very good, uh, you know, ETF to buy. And it did very nicely in a five-year, five-year, one-year, even uh, ten-year. So I highlighted some of these XLF, you know, DIA. You know, if you don't want to, you know, watch stock market day in, day out, you could buy some of this ETF and, you know, keep it away and, uh, you know, buy it on a down day, keep it away and take it from there. And same is the story with the SMH, which is semiconductor, did very nicely on a five, one year, five year, 10 year. And uh, even Russell, is, Russell also did nicely on a one year, five year, 10 year chart. Not as big as, you know, XLK or QQQ, but did nicely. Energy, as you can see here, you know, did very poor, poorly on a five-year, ten-year, and so is uh, you know the the IEF, which is um, Treasury bond. They did not do too well. So with that, let's go into ETF winners. Um, as you can see here, we talked through this a little bit. XLK Technologies did nicely. Schwab Large Cap Growth uh, did very nicely, um, and uh, you know many of these as I'll. Point out a couple of them here. Um, you know, as you can see here, um, iShares 500 growth ETF did well. Vanguard growth ETF. You know, most of these have done very nicely. Um, and you know, even Arc, which is Kathy Woods, uh, you know, ETF, it, it also did nicely last week. So overall, you know, most of these uh, ETFs have done very nicely. One thing I would point out is Ethereum, as you can see here. Uh, which is a cryptocurrency uh, ETF. It has done very nicely. Um, and uh, I think Mark Cuban is uh, really making some news saying he bought some Ethereum off late. So that's why it all, it went up. Very nice profit, um, para parabolic move, 21% up. And expense ratio is a little high. You know, if you want to buy, you know, you could buy, you know, ETCG, you know, but expense ratio is high you could rather buy ethereum uh, in coinbase.com um, so with that let's go into um, etf losers um, the actual bitcoin itself you know um, crypto that came down last week 11 percent down um, and oil and gas went down um, biotech is down five percent uh, solar stocks are down as you can see here tan is a solar etf um, and cannabis itself is down, uh, energy down, um, clean energy is also down, and uh, you know travel stocks are down as you can see here. So with that, these are some some of the down uh, downers from an ETF perspective. Um, but some of these have you know done nicely as you can see here. S and P 500 Biotech ETF, it's uh, done very nicely in a 10-year chart. So you could you know buy some of these you know especially XPI when it's down if you buy it you could do very nicely and same is the story with the you know uh, clean energy ETF done nicely over a 10 year chart um, and last one is uh, you know clean energy again clean energy QCLN it has done nicely over a you know 10 year chart so with that let's go into um, small cap uh, weekly winners. Um, so you know this is this is a um, handful. Um, I would not talk through everything in detail, but um, I will. I'm highlighting some of these stocks mainly because you know if you look at these stocks, for example, uh, Fortress Biotech, Cora Therapeutics, Isia. Uh, the reason I highlight this is really they got a very good one-year um, you know sales growth and very good quarter-over-quarter quarter sales growth and nice gross margin. The moment you have good sales growth, good margin, gross margin, that's the recipe for uh, success. That's why I highlighted some of these stocks with the very nice uh, you know, growth, revenue growth and gross margin. And um, you, know, you could buy some of these um, and uh, hold it for a long time. 
but i would also ask you to watch out for um, you know the um, actual ps ratio if ps ratio is high you know for example 100 plus here for this company um, i would i would uh, watch out i would not buy right away and i would also watch out uh, short ratio in some cases uh, you know example dmyd high short ratio and same is the story with love sack and property solutions um, and one thing to look out for whenever there is a high short ratio look out, look out for one year uh, performance i'm uh, sorry one week performance two week performance one month so if it's going up you don't want to buy into this because uh, you know stock is going up it, it's a short squeeze scenario it's already went up so you'd rather have it uh, come down if it's coming down and slightly recovering then you can buy but when it's uh, going up like this it's really risky to buy um, expecting a short squeeze so with that let's uh, you know i also like bt bt bit digital um, you know it, it went up but if you look at from a one year perspective it's a down 48 percent from a you know 52 week high so i like to buy this stock also on a, you know on a down day and keep it for long term so with that let's go into you know small cap weekly losers um big news uh, fgen fibrogen stock crashed big time 48 percent in one week mainly because their kidney um you know um, um drug which is uh, um you know which which uh, they accepted they did some uh, um, wrong um you know um, data collection and uh, probably tampered the data a little bit so that's why stock came down big time i feel this is a buying opportunity you know you could uh, buy some and keep it for a long time you know many of these biotechs as you know they got this boom and bust whenever there is a drug which did not do well or some issue around you know currently they have some issue around um, the data accuracy i think some of these are really you know once you wait a little bit as you see uptick it's it could be good to buy these stocks you know go up and down a lot especially during these uh, these type of scenarios um, i highlighted this because uh, you know sales growth from a quarter over quarter perspective it's very good 715 and nice gross margin so the stock is down so it could be a good opportunity to buy and next is homology fix i think they got a very good uh, sales growth from a one year and quarter over quarter perspective only one thing is a uh, high valuation i would watch out a little bit you know when it's uh, down like this it may be okay to buy some but uh, valuation is high you have to watch out don't buy too much um, buy in uh, increments and take it from there and next two are uh, transmedics and yi um, you know nice you know as you can see here quarter over quarter growth is nice in transmedics and yi which is based in china nice sales growth um, and also um, you know good um, gross margin why i gross margin is low but uh, transmedics good gross margin you know these guys are into organ transplants i think uh, you know they are doing pretty well uh, transmedics so with that uh, let's go into um, mid cap weekly winners from a mid cap perspective as you can see here uh, many of these stocks like orgo nice sales growth um, and nice gross margin silvergate you know this is one of my favorites they're into bitcoins um, you know this bank has got bitcoin it's really a bank with bitcoin assets they're doing nicely i'm buying them whenever they are uh, um, pulled back a little bit um, gross margin is uh, zero but uh, nice uh, revenue growth and tigr up fintech based in china they got very nice one year sales growth and quarter over quarter sales growth and nice gross margin you know i buy this stock you know on a, on all the down days so that way i can accumulate them it's a, you know they're into brokerage type business in china um and calix afia same story um nice uh, uh you know revenue growth and good gross margin uh, lg display same same thing based in korea and high max same story i would buy some of these on a down day um, next we'll go into mid cap weekly losers um, normally i always uh, like to buy stocks on a you know pullback so i pay close attention to weekly losers um, weekly losers with good revenue growth are my you know prime candidates to purchase in this case acadia 
GSX, which has fallen off so badly with the, this whole Archigo saga. I think it's good to buy some of these stocks on a down day. I would watch out for uh, floats. I would, I would also watch out for you know, price to sales ratio, which is valuation. So some of these, for example, Acadia um, or uh, GSX, as you can see here, um, high short uh, ratio. But as you can see here, stock has been falling off 81% from 52 week high. And even now it's uh, kind of falling off and you know, it's kind of tried to stabilize a little bit. Last week it fell off 15%. You know, when I look at this, you know, it's fallen off so much, you know, mostly, you know, these short sellers will be covering their position because they made a good profit. As I see uptick, I'll be slowly buying this uh, GSX tech do. So that way, you know, we can participate in the upward move. Um, full gent genetics, uh, you know, you have to be careful with this one. Um, you know, this stock, you know, bounces uh, very much. On a down day, you could buy this and, uh, you know, as you can see here, huge one year sales, huge quarter over quarter sales, but stock is off 55% from 52 week high. So on a down day, it's good to buy, you know, Fulgent. Uh, it's into uh, diagnostics, uh, you know, like COVID diagnostics as, as example. So you can look at some of these stocks. You could, uh, you know, Sonova, Ultra, you could buy on, you know, it's already down. You could buy some and uh, take it from there. Next, we look at uh, large cap weekly winners. So, you know, some of these stocks, as you can see here, SID, um, you know, and uh, Snap, Square, you know, these are all, these stocks have got very good, um, you know, revenue growth and very good gross margin. Um, and some of these stocks are off 52 week high. For example, Snap is off 14%. Um, Roku is off 23% from 52 week high. So you could buy some of these stocks on a down day, but right now they've shot up so much last week. I would not buy right now. Well, stocks are good, good revenue growth, but I would buy on a down day. Now let's go into um, large cap weekly losers. As you can see here, GameStop, um, you know, they have, you know, they have done a little bit poorly last week, 17% down, mainly because I think they, you know, they issued some more stocks that will basically make the supply more a little bit less demand. That's why stock has come down a little bit. And as you can see, short ratio is a little bit short up. Uh, Sunrun, um, you know, all the solar stock, many of these solar stocks and clean energy stocks are down. You know, I've been, you know, buying some of these uh, stocks like Sunrun, nice revenue growth and good, good gross margin. Um, and some of these EV stocks like, you know, Lee as an example, even um, Neo. Uh, plug power. Uh, I've been buying some of these uh, because they have come down so much. Uh, it's good to buy some and keep it for long term. Um, and Canopy Growth, uh, it's one of the good stocks. Constellation Energy has uh, put in a couple billion dollars into this company. I think this stock will do well as we go forward. Plug Power, good revenue growth. Um, you know, I, I think it's good to invest. And face energy and uh, solar edge. These two are my fav favorites here. I would uh, you know buy some and solar edge. I think a uh, little bit less revenue growth, but N phase has got good revenue growth also. Um, Viacom, you know, it came down drastically as you can see here, uh, mainly because of this whole Archigos hedge fund collapse. I think it's good to buy some um, and keep it for long term. Next is mega cap, cap weekly winners. Um, as you can see here, most of these mega cap stocks have done very nicely. Um, last week, as you can see here, 8%, 7%, uh, nice growth. You know, even these huge big cap stocks, mega cap stocks have done nicely. I would watch out for, you know, these stocks with good sales growth that are highlighted here and nice uh, gross margin. I would buy these on down day. Right now, these are up. Um, with the exception of PayPal here, it's uh, down 13% from 52 week high, maybe okay to nibble. And also Salesforce.com, it's down 18% from 52 week high. But otherwise, you know, most of these stocks are at their 52 week high. You got to be watching out a little bit. So next, let's look at mega cap losers. Um, you know, these are all mega cap losers. Um, Ten cent, um, nice, you know, revenue growth, um, nice gross margin. I would, you know, buy some, uh, or, you know, it's already down. I would buy some, keep it for long term, and same is the story with, uh, you know, 
Taiwan Semi, J&J, Alibaba, ASML, they've come down, um, you know, a little bit for the uh, for the last week. Uh, I would buy some and keep it. You know, watch out for some of these, uh, you know, numbers here. Ten cent is off, twenty percent, fifty week high. Alibaba is off 30%. <clears throat> Looks like Alibaba has got some issues with Chinese government, so that's why it's kind of selling off off late. You could, uh, you know, accumulate slowly, no need to hurry, and uh, it will do well in the long term. So with that, thank you very much. Happy investing.